Good evening, uh, Professor William Shabas, the new chair for the Commission Inquiry to Gaza. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Shall we say uh, congratulations? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Shabas, uh, a year ago you said that your favorite person to stand in front of the International Criminal Court is Prime Minister Netanyahu, not President Assad of Syria, not Hamas leader Khaled Marshal. You said Netanyahu. Can you explain why? We were having a discussion about the International Criminal Court and the uh, fa fact that the International Criminal Court had focused all of its attention on African countries. I had referred to a statement by Archbishop Tutu where he had said Tony Blair should be brought before the International Criminal Court to show that it can deal with Western countries as well as with countries from the, from the South, particularly from Africa. And so I said, well, my favorite would be Netanyahu. I was, of course, echoing what was in the Goldstone Report, which is that the International Criminal Court should deal with the conclusions of the Goldstone Report, uh, concluding the possibility that war crimes and crimes against humanity were committed during Operation Cast Lead. But as you know, the International Criminal Court never did address those matters. So that was the context of my comment. Professor Shabas, you also said that you think President Perez should uh, stand for a trail in front of the ICC. So you, as a professor for international law, would you recommend your client, after hearing such comments, to cooperate with such an investigation? Oh, I think this is a, a great exaggeration of some of the statements. I expressed opinions about, uh, about political leaders in Israel in the past. Is there a human being in Israel who's never expressed political opinions about leaders in Israel? What someone who sits in a commission or as a judge has to be able to do is to put these things behind them and start fresh. And this is, of course, what I intend to do. Professor Shabas, do you plan to investigate uh, Hamas crimes as well? Are you really able to investigate a terror organization who threaten his own people? I cannot tell you what the Commission is going to uh, do in terms of interpreting its mandate because I'm only one member and I haven't had a meeting with the other commissioners. We will have to agree on the interpretation. By the way, uh, do you consider Hamas uh, a terror organization? It would be inappropriate for me to answer a question like that, uh, given what I said earlier about having to start uh, basically with a blank sheet and start to study this question in as neutral and objective a manner as possible. So you can say it's I'm a terror I'm telling you it would be inappropriate for me given my position. Professor Shabas, I'll ask it again. Why uh, Israel should cooperate with your delegation? I think it's very important for Israel to cooperate. The allegations, uh, the specific allegations, uh, have a great deal to do with the use of force, the targeting and the proportionality of the targeting, the identification of military objectives. Israel's already spoken to this. It's in the public domain. Israel has made statements saying, first of all, we're acting in self-defense about the Hamas rockets. And when we uh, use force in Gaza, Israel's position is that it is proportionate and that it is not targeting civilians. These are matters of public record. Now, it's one thing to say that as a, as a broad statement. It's another thing to look at individual cases and see whether that's actually accurate. It's in Israel's interest to be there in that discussion and to give its version of the events. If it doesn't, then that leaves a, uh, an unfortunate one-sided uh, picture of it. The U.S. Army attack in Iraq uh, nowadays, the Russian attack in Chechnya, the NATO forces in uh, Libya, thousands of innocent civilians were killed in this uh, conflict. Not a single international investigation. Israel has two in six years. In both cases, Israel acts in self-defense. Isn't it double standard, Professor? You know, there are lots of double standards in the United Nations and lots of double standards on the, at the international level. And as I explained, 
the the fact that there haven't been inquiries into some atrocities and to some areas of violent conflict in the world is explained by the political balances and the relative strength of the powers and that's a very unfortunate situation but it's a fact of life and different crises and different countries fare differently depending on where they are many people think there's a double standard in the united nations security council because israel gets off rather light in the united nations security council the fact that there's no inquiry into russia or into the united states is uh, obviously explained by the fact that those countries uh, dominate not only the Security Council, but also have a huge amount of political influence in bodies like the Human Rights Council. Professor, and we, we, have, we unfortunately live with that as a reality in the world situation. Professor Sheibas, thank you for joining us and good luck. Thank you.